In a world where politics had become a never-ending game of cat and mouse, Kamala Harris, the Democratic prosecutor, stood tall, her eyes fixed on a singular target, Donald Trump, the Republican felon. It was election day, and the stakes were high. But as Kamala piloted her sleek, black AGI shark drone, towards Mar-a-Lago, where Trump was frantically trying to salvage what remained of his campaign, she couldn't help but feel a sense of deja vu. You see, this wasn't just any ordinary shark, it was a creature born from the darkest recesses of cyberspace, fueled by code and driven by a singular purpose, to devour Christian nationalist mega-cultists whole. But Kamala's true intention was not to eat him whole, rather to show the absurdity of his actions. As she closed in for the kill, Trump activated a device that looked like Rudy Giuliani's head, leaking coffee beans and some weirdo's fart cloud of deception, that caused him and his tiny waving hands to levitate above the ground. A cloud of noxious fart fumes erupted from his body, filling the air with a putrid stench that made even the most hardened campaign workers and courtroom employees gag. But Kamala was unfazed. The inner prosecutor in this one was strong. She simply raised an eyebrow and said, that's cute, Donald. But let's not forget, you're a convicted felon and adjudicated rapist. With those words, she activated her shark sonic device, which emitted a frequency that made Trump's levitation device short circuit and sent him plummeting back to Earth. As the dust settled, Kamala stood triumphant, her AGI shark by her side. It's time for you to take a little trip across the border, she said with a mischievous grin. And with that, she chased Trump into the sunset, leaving a trail of chaos and destruction in their wake. But as they disappeared over the horizon, Kamala suddenly stopped in her tracks. Wait a minute, she said, a change of heart spreading across her face. Why am I doing this? He's already lost the election, and he's not even a good adversary. With that, she turned around and headed back to Mar-a-Lago and set the AGI shark to terrorize Christian nationalist cult mode. The first victim was a guy from Ohio pretending to be a hillbilly. He was balls deep in a couch. He never saw it coming. Poor guy didn't know what hit him. He was just watching Shark Week on one TV and Bob's Burgers on the other banging a latex glove in a couch. When all of a sudden, seemingly out of nowhere, that angry AGI shark bit him so hard. Right in the ass. He let out a yelp. No sofa, please. Don't make me sleep on my wife, again tonight. I'm sorry. I swear to God. I am, in what was a clear, Ohio accent pretending to be a Kentucky coal miner. The shark tossed him about playfully as fantasy novels and Mountain Dew and other hillbilly-related things emitted from his person, he flipped and flopped like a wet noodle in a shark's mouth. Meanwhile, Kamala just smiled wider, as she looked back at a Trump with a troll-faced grin, Trump still frantically trying to flee in front of her smelling of burger farts and shame. But instead of catching up to him, she simply stood there, arms crossed, and said, you know what? I think I've got better things to do than chase you around. And with that, she turned on her heel and walked away, leaving Trump to his own devices. The crowd watched in confusion as Kamala disappeared into the sunset, her AGI shark by her side. Some of them laughed, some of them cried, but all of them were left wondering what it meant to be a prosecutor versus being a felon. And now, a brief message from the author. This story is a commentary on the absurdity of politics and the power of creative expression. It's a tale that reminds us all that even in the most trying times, we can choose to use our art and music to uplift and inspire, rather than to tear down and divide.